Today we are diving into the failed and forgotten brands of our favorite childhood Disney stars. I'm curious how many of these you remember or how many you owned. And trust me, there's a lot. <laughs> Starting with Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez's first ever brand was her Dream Out Loud clothing collection that sold in Kmart from 2010 until she discontinued it in 2014. This collection was the perfect combination of the awkwardness of the 2010 business casual style with elements of the boho style that was really, really popular in the 2010s. I specifically wanted this look and I think I accomplished just that. Okay, well, I almost nailed this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a different top than she was wearing, and I swear I ordered a black skirt. So now I'm thinking, is hers purple? It's pretty cute. I don't feel like I look as put together as she does for some reason. I think it's the belt. Selena's next business venture was perfume. The 2010s were like the time of celebrity perfumes. And I remember this one specifically, this iconic flower vase looking design. And the ad created drama because people were saying it was so steamy, which looking back now is so silly. She's literally just like in water in a dress. Anyway, this one was such a hit that the following year, 2013, she followed it up with Viva More and I actually found one on Poshmark. This stuff is reselling for crazy amounts. This was $99 and I'm not even sure if anything's in it. Okay, so this one has the same iconic flower design, but it's white and rose gold. It's definitely a little bit scuffed up on the edges, but it feels like there's something in it still. Let's see, does perfume go bad? Oh, it still smells. <gasps> Wait, it smells good. <laughs> I actually love it. Fragranautica, the website, has a really good breakdown of what this smells like. It's very floral. It has like a spring summery smell to it. Unfortunately, this business had a messy ending to say the least. It resulted in the perfume company Adrenalina and Selena Gomez suing each other. And honestly, I don't think anybody won, which is a shame because I think this perfume was a hit. Around the same time in 2012, OPI collaborated with Selena Gomez on a line of nail polish colors. I bought these on Mercari used with the promise that none of them were dried up. So let's see if that's true. <laughs> Emily, she even threw in a bonus color. So we have 13 of them. I'm not sure how many there were originally, but that's gotta be the majority. We've got Sweet Dreams, Fantasia, Two Love Songs, Scarlet, that one's stunning. Naturally, Confetti Fun, Inner Sparkle, Oh, Spring Break, Kissed at Midnight, Hit the Lights, Selena, and Heavenly Angel. And they all have this cute Selena Gomez on the top part. I would wear pretty much all of these today, 10 years later. And I love that a bunch of them are named after her songs. Moving on to 2018, I am so excited about this one, but Selena Gomez collaborated with Coach. And this was the first time Coach ever did a ready to wear clothing collection. They paid Selena Gomez $10 million to do this. And I don't think that even counts her portion of the sales. So while this may be forgotten, this was definitely not a business failure for Selena. And the clothes in this collection were genuinely so cute, but there was one in particular that I just had to have. It is this adorable sweater. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try this on. Look at the cute tag. This is so cute. It's honestly giving some Wizards of Waverly Place vibes. I love the sparkly stripes and this little bunny is so cute. I love this. Speaking of Selena's coach collaboration, she actually came out with the cutest purse with them. And there's a whole bunch of these floating around on the internet that are actually signed by her. Unfortunately, they're going for like thousands of dollars. <laughs> so I found one on Poshmark and I'm putting in an offer for one. So if they accept my offer and it gets here before this video has to go up, I'll unbox it and give it away to one of you guys. Selena was just crushing it. Around this time, she also had an activewear collection with Puma, which if you are an OG Hope Scoper, you might remember this video that I made. <laughs> I specifically remember how unwearable this collection was. Like I was into some pretty out there active wear, but this collection was a lot even for me. I can tell you now, after this video, I did not wear a single one of these items another time. I think I ended up returning pretty much all of it, except the shoes. I actually wore those shoes all the time. Moving on to Miley Cyrus. You can't even say the name Miley Cyrus without thinking of Hannah Montana. And while all of these stars that we're talking about had merch associated with the show, 
shows that they were on, none of them compared to the Hannah Montana Empire. Disney first launched the Hannah Montana merchandise in 2006, and they had everything from jewelry to toys to stationery, accessories, clothing, video games. And in just two years, it ended up becoming a billion dollar franchise. I always wonder how much of that Miley actually got. Half of it, 10%, none of it. <laughs> but there's one Hannah Montana product in particular that I came across and I had no idea about it back in the day. Oh my gosh, it's huge. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> this is Miley's Malibu Barbie dream house. <laughs> Why did I not know this existed? Okay, but wait, Miley's bedroom? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. <gasps> and it even has a swing chair. Like the furniture is exactly like the furniture in the show. So cute. And then we have Miley's room upstairs with the stained glass window. And then I believe this room next to it is her like closet dressing room room. And then of course the kitchen. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you remember this. And to go with the dream house, you know I had to get a Hannah Montana Barbie doll and not just any Hannah Montana Barbie doll. This is the quick switch one. It feels illegal to open this because it was so expensive. <laughs> I think this was like $200, but it's the coolest one. Okay, so here she is as Hannah Montana with her straight blonde hair, but then it turns <laughs> Miley's wavy brown hair. <laughs> Although the catch is it only looks good from the front. She's so cute and the perfect addition to my newest Barbie dream house. Moving on to Miley's first business venture that wasn't Hannah Montana and Disney related. She teamed up with Max Arzia to create a clothing line that was sold exclusively at Walmart in 2009. Unfortunately, this collection only lasted about a year. And I personally wanted this leopard print fedora because <laughs> I just feel like this sums up the collection in a nutshell. The jewelry line was actually banned from Walmart first because it was discovered that it had a dangerous amount of toxic cadmium in it. And then unfortunately, the clothing brand followed shortly after as a consequence of Miley's teen party. But her next collaboration is with MAC Cosmetics. She came out with a line of lipsticks with them and look how cute this packaging is. It has like her signature in a shiny red on it. I found this on eBay. It looks like it's never been opened. And this shade in particular is Viva Glam Miley Cyrus 2. Some very simple packaging. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It also has her signature along the inside. Okay, let's see if it still works. <gasps> okay, this one is a really bright red that almost has hints of orange to it. Ooh, literally like new. <laughs> Moving on to 2018 and one of my favorite collaborations that Miley ever did. She collaborated with Converse and they made some really unique designs. And of course the like cool platform pink and blue ones that I wanted the most are the ones that are reselling for the most. <laughs> These ones weren't too bad of a deal though. They were only $70 used on Poshmark. It's the pink velvet platforms. The platform is so high Converse logo here. And then on the other side, this cute little Miley Cyrus embroidered logo. The laces are even sparkly. <laughs> Oh, we've got the logo inside too. These honestly look like they've never been worn. So I feel like it was a pretty good deal. Let me know in the comments if you want a sequel to this video where I review Disney Channel stars current brands. You may be wondering, Hope, where are the Disney Channel boys? Well, for some reason, the boys just didn't have businesses. <laughs> I really dug, but like for Zac Efron, only thing that came up was his dating past <laughs> and like a few Barbies. <laughs> Dylan and Cole Sprouse, they actually had a brand called Sprouse Bros. I guess they sold like some home goods. I literally couldn't find any of it though. But I did find that Dylan and Cole Sprouse had a book series. One, two, and three. So these are like, they're kind of a mix between a chapter book and a comic book. They have these little comics in the middle. And I think they're mysteries, which I honestly loved mystery books growing up. So I'm kind of sad that I didn't know about these. Not the Nashu Public Library. <laughs> Did somebody steal these from the library and resell them to me? I just finished all of these in one sitting. It took me about a little over an hour for each book. The pages are really little and there's a lot of illustrations on most of them. These are definitely intended for like middle schoolers. Very cute books. I got to about page 14 when I realized 
Dylan and Cole definitely didn't write this. <laughs> it definitely gave off the vibe of somebody older trying to write as a 15 year old by Mark Saraceni. Mark is currently 71 years old. That means he was about 53 when he wrote these books and he did a really good job, but should I pull out my cell phone to capture this moment digitally? <laughs> 15 year olds don't talk like that. Even in 2005, there's actually three more after this one. And to be honest, I'm not like dying to finish the series. If I were a middle schooler, I would give them like a 7.5 out of 10. Adult me, like a four. Moving on to our Disney queen, Hilary Duff. <laughs> I loved Lizzie McGuire when I was little. And Hilary's first business venture was Stuff by Hilary Duff. I remember this one. I don't think I ever actually was able to own any of it, but today's the day. Stuff by Hilary Duff is exactly what it sounds like. It was everything from makeup to accessories to fashion until she finally discontinued it in 2007. I actually got two stuff things. The funny thing about this first one is she made it such a point to make this brand affordable. So her like little makeup kits were less than $4. I paid 40 for this. Talk about inflation. Oh my gosh, but it's in the original packaging and everything. Mini lip duos. Oh, Hillary walked so that Kylie lip kits could run. I can't believe I didn't have this when I was little. What is this? I'm, oh, it's a magnet. It's totally discolored. Oh my gosh, look at that plastic. That looks like it's 20 years old, that's for sure. We've got the gloss on one side. It still works, oh my gosh. And then on the other side, we have like a glittery pink. I cannot believe these are like new. That is so impressive. 20 years later, the other thing I got from Stuff. <laughs> Is this shirt? I honestly think this is precious. It's definitely made for like preteens, but I feel like this style has fully come back. And this is the type of top that like the Depop resale girlies will find and sell for like $50 because Y2K. Hillary's next brand is, you may have guessed it, perfume. And this one was called With Love by Hillary Duff. I have high hopes for this one since the Selena one was so good. In 2006, I was a bit too young for perfume. We're living out that dream now. <laughs> Oh my gosh, cute packaging. Oh, you smell it already? But it's so pretty. What does it smell like is the question. Cause this is what, 15 years old now? Ah! Wow, that is not what I was expecting. It almost has like a spice. I don't think I like it as much as the Selena, that's for sure. The next big thing that Hillary did was she partnered up with DNKY and she came out with the line Femme. I have actually seen this line all over throughout the years, but I had no idea that Hillary Duff was behind it for some reason. I tried to buy some. I actually found this really cute denim jacket that I actually would wear now, but unfortunately the eBay seller couldn't find it to ship it to me. So we don't have any of that. But her next thing, <laughs> She wrote a novel. This was in 2010. I don't know how I missed this. It's a young adult fiction novel called Elixir and it went on to be a New York Times bestseller. It has great reviews. But will it pass? The Hope Scope review. Honestly, this book met and far exceeded all of my expectations. <laughs> I genuinely really enjoyed this. It has kind of like Twilight vibes as far as the romance goes, you know, like forbidden love, love triangle. It was written around the same time that Twilight was popular, so it kind of makes sense. It ends on a cliffhanger, so I definitely will be reading the second and third book. Hillary did have some help writing this book. Elise Allen is who she gave credit to. And Elise is like legit. She actually wrote a lot of the Barbie movies, but I can tell that Hillary did write most of this book. I give it like a 8.9 out of 10. Moving on to Vanessa Hutchins, our high school musical star. I honestly thought she would have had more brands than she did back in the day, but her first one, I remember so vividly. It was her collaboration with Candy's clothing and it was sold at Kohl's. I remember doing back to school shopping around this time and seeing this brand, but it was always too expensive for me. I was more of a clearance rack kind of girl <laughs> and I cannot find any of it for the life of me. I swear that's what it was called, unless it was called something else. If you remember, let me know because it's got to exist out there somewhere. In 2011, Vanessa collaborated with Sinful Colors to create a makeup line and nail polish. And since we already did nail polish for Selena. I went ahead and got the makeup. All right, 12 year old makeup. I have no idea if this is used or not. Oh, the packaging looks nice. It's a lot smaller than I was expecting. It looks brand new. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This hasn't ever been used. Look at this blue. Let's see how pigmented it is after all these years though. Okay, this blue one's called Manix. Let's see. Ah. Let me try my finger. Maybe that'll work better. Ah. 
Ooh, maybe butterfly will work better, this purple. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> I could give it the benefit of the doubt and say it's because it's been 12 years. Dreamscape. Ah, it literally looks like I just put flour on my hand. <laughs> the shimmer is not shimmering. The brown, nude beach, maybe? Oh, that's definitely the best out of all of them. One winner. All right, we're going back to my roots with this next one. Vanessa Hudgens collaborated with Fabletics, and this line was very loungy, I would say, compared to what Fabletics usually does. Lots of velvet and this like towel-like material. <laughs> okay, here's our first one. Oh, I love Poshmark sellers. They just gave me a free lip gloss thing. Okay, first up, oh, new with tags and everything, a $90 velvet velvet jumpsuit. <laughs> Let's try it on. Okay, now that this thing is on, I feel like I fully remember buying this back in the day when it first came out. And I think I didn't wear it a single time <laughs> because it's just like too casual to wear out, but then it's not quite comfy enough to wear as like pajamas. So I just don't really know where it belongs in my wardrobe. <laughs> Item number two, this is the Island Terry dress. Oh, this one's also brand new with tags. It was $70 original. I'm not really sure the use for it other than before and after swimming, but we'll try it on. Maybe it'll be cute. This thing is terrible. <laughs> it's not a super comfy fabric. It's really short. These barely cover anything. And the halter strap is way too long and loose. It's just, I don't get it. <laughs> they definitely had like actual active wear in this collection, but for some reason, the campaign really focused on this and like the velvety stuff. It's a no from me. Editing hope here. I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news, our offer for the signed Selena bag was officially accepted and it's on the way. The bad news is, I don't know if it's gonna make it here on time before I have to post this video. It's gonna be cutting it close, so. Stick around to find out. Next up, Zendaya. I actually pulled you guys over on my Instagram stories to see which Disney Channel star was your favorite and Zendaya won by like a landslide. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that you remember and maybe owned some of these brands. Zendaya's very first brand was in 2015 and she came out with a shoe line called Daya, which I guess Daya was her nickname growing up. And honestly, I love these shoe designs. They're just really kind of simple strappy heel designs. I particularly Really, really wanted this kind of ombre blue strappy heel, but I could not find it in my size. I don't even think these are exactly my size, but I'm working with what I got. Okay, so here's what the box looked like. And these ones are these cute shimmery gold. <laughs> Wait, these are so cute. And they actually feel like pretty good quality. Here's what the bottom looks like with her little signature and then the cute little Daya on the bottom. Oh, that actually is kind of like grippy too. That's brilliant. Zendaya's next business was actually a collaboration with the clothing brand Boohoo. And this collection is so cute. This was in 2018, but I feel like this whole collection was like way ahead of its time. I would wear every single one of these. In fact, I really tried to hunt down this striped set. I I think it's adorable and I couldn't find it anywhere. Same thing with this blue dress. It sold out and people kept these things. Honestly, I feel like Zendaya was just made to design clothes. So I hope that we see more clothing from her in the future. After Boohoo in 2019, she collaborated with Tommy Hilfiger to create a clothing line. And these clothes were absolutely beautiful. Once again, I tried to find this red leather outfit everywhere. I searched the whole internet. Whoever has them is really keeping been a tight hold on them. I did find a few other pieces. The first thing I got is this cute t-shirt. I honestly really like it. It just has this cute little colorful graphic on it. The tags are also adorable, the little Tommy Zendaya. I'm really excited about this one. It's, oh, it's new with tags too. <gasps> The monogram long sleeve sweater dress. Look how cute the tag is. This is hands down my favorite clothing item from this entire video. It's like the cutest dark academia vibes and it's so comfy, it fits so well. A very effortless look, especially once it's styled. Around the same time that she did this Tommy Hilfiger collaboration, she actually launched her own clothing line called Daya. So that's what I think happened to the shoes is it all became one thing and she launched 
this like unisex, really cool, trendy, modern clothing line. Unfortunately, it only lasted for about a year. She found out that the orders weren't being fulfilled by the company that she hired to do it. It is canceled indefinitely. Like I said, I hope she does more with clothing because every single clothing collaboration she's ever done has been magnificent. <laughs> Guess what? It came with literally like an hour to spare before I have to upload this video. Wow, it even came in the original box and everything. <gasps> This is so cool, are you kidding me? Look at the signature. Oh, and then it has like a nice suede on the edges. This thing literally looks brand new. There's also like a strap. Okay, so if you're interested in getting this bag, go find this Instagram post. Yay! Let me know if I should do a video on our favorite Disney Channel stars current brands. In the meantime, you should check out my videos where I bought failed and forgotten Kardashian brands or when I bought discontinued products from our childhood. Say bye, YouTube.